Toastmaster um, Easy Speakers. Tell me about my journey through franchise. First, how I, how I even seen, um, how I even came through. I was at a, a career center that it was like a career center and a nutritional information center all in one. It's where they assist um, expected mothers with nutritional information and provide a formula for infant kids. And I looked around and I seen a big sign that says, Franchise Tax Board is now hiring. So <laughs> it had all the information on how to fill out the application and what time to come back. And they had a representative at this time from Franchise that was going to come and help assist you with your application process and also we're turning in the application for you. So I filled out my, went back at the time that it was on the, um, on the poster. I filled out my application. You know, she was, like she said, like I said, they were, she would assist us filling out the application. And then we had, from that point, we had another, um, like an orientation where we were supposed to come here to franchise. Because the first one was at that career center. So the next orientation was here at Franchise. So we come in and they make sure our applications are complete and give us a date to come back. And then after I finished that process, it was like I was hired on, you know, they had to do the background check. Mm -hmm. So that was the process I went through. So, and like, and I remember like in the hired orientation, they were asking anybody in here have a driver's license to pass be all right. This is doing the hiring orientation, I passed graduate school. So when it came to that, I said, and I remember telling them, say, yes, I have a class A license. So they, the, the, the uh, person who was doing, giving the orientation, he asked me, he said, well, would you ever be interested in driving for us? I looked at him, I said, no, because me, I knew that they weren't paying the truck driver's salary. The, my application, my classification said seasonal clerk. My pay was 743. So no, at that time I think, no, I do not want to drive trucks for franchise. I didn't know anything about franchise. I had no friends or, you know, nobody to re really tell me, you know, about um, what all the job would entail here at franchise. So, and the funny thing, I found later was I ended up inside the receiving in the machines area. And this is where the truck drivers pull up to the dock. And I didn't know why at first. They pull up to the dock and they, uh, where they had the mail cages. And you worked in the machines area, you go out there and help pull the cages off the truck. And then once you got the mail off the cages, Inside, we would unload the cages, and then at that time, we were sitting down, sorting by P.O. box. And finally, they came up with the mail sorting machine. Oh, I was so glad. That thing was like a dream <laughs> come true, because it would open the mail, sort it by the P.O. box, and we no longer had to do that, right? So this is my first season there. I received a certificate for being the most, having the highest production. I also received one for perfect attendance. I said, whoa, I'm doing good. So, like I said, I didn't know that much about franchise at that time. So then after that season, not really understanding, I was furloughed. So I said, well, God, if I got all this, I'm doing this great. How, why did I get furloughed? So I did. So I got an invitation to come back the next year. So when I came back the next year, I started looking around and what, you know, because I was under the pressure that they hired us for the season, all seasons of those employees were, you know, you had a time frame and then you come back during the next season. But then I noticed there was some uh, staff that were seasonals and stayed here all year round. So I went to ask it, you know, what type of people, you know, were able to stay, what kind of jobs, and they kind of gave me this seniority thing. So they stayed by seniority. So I said, okay. And, but then it still, it seemed to me like, it wasn't so much a seniority, it's what types of little specialty jobs they knew or whether they needed them to work some kind of special jobs, right? Okay, so, but so when I come back, come to find out, one of the ladies that got to stay, she was a truck driver. 
she drove the trucks. And then there was another guy who rode with her. He was also one of the truck drivers. But then she got promoted, went to another state agency. And the, uh, the other guy, he was transferred to a different place. So what? I ended up driving the trucks. So they asked me again, <laughs> I drove the trucks. From that point on, I was never furloughed again. <laughs> and I really enjoyed doing that job, driving the trucks, because during the tax season, I was never here. I was making four or five trips daily. Okay, so then, after that, I did that for about four or five seasons. And then, a manager came to me. No, a manager came and told me about a, a TPA exam, the Tax Program Assistant exam. I said, oh, okay, I'll take it. I went to the test. I said, okay, so I did not pass the test. I mean, I passed the test, but I passed at a low score of 70. So she turns around, she says, Trisha, I want to get you, but I can't get you because you're not high enough on the list. So that's what I found out about the skills lab. Went to the skills lab and started preparing for the next test because at this time, it seemed like it was given like every other year. When that test came back again, got a 95. Yeah. And I was like, woo, woo, I got a 95, I'm gonna get in, right? But then, oh, at that time, it was 600 people in that same rank with me. And I kind of asked, wow, am I gonna get in, right? But that's when my work ethics came into play. They reached right in the middle of that group and got me in. And then from that point, I did that for a little while. So the, one of the manager came and said, don't you want to move from this area? I'm proud of it. I left <laughs> the machines there. So I went into other, another area where I learned different workloads and, you know, just get more familiar with franchise. Then it turned around, they had this TPA test. I took it. So then I got an LT position the first time. And then by the time I finished that LT, they were hiring a permanent uh, tax program technician. And I got that position. And I went on from there, I went to, uh, I, I, I went to take the, uh, I qualified to take the supervisor exam after I did uh, my LT position for so long. And when it came to supervisor exam, I, ooh, I almost gave up. I took that test at least three times, it was a rule of one rank. And me, the first time I took it, I was at 12, seven, couldn't get there, I almost gave up. And the last time, I said, well, at least I'm going to take, I decided, I said, well, I'm going to do the TPT too. So if I don't get a perm suit, I know I'm over, I'm past, but I got to finish. <laughs> I, I would get a TPT too. So I took the, I went to the skills lab to refresh my skills, and I took the TPT two test. And from there, I was able to uh, at least rank. I got rank three, did an interview. But by this time, the supervisor test exam was coming up, so I took that. And that was my first time I was in rank one, two, because there was one person in rank one, one person in rank two, and that was me. And three, I didn't even care about. So I was up <laughs> for the interview, and I got my perm supervisor position. And then, because I had, and so I did a few years of doing the uh, supervision as a limited term before I got my permit. So I did that. And then when the OSM, the Office of Service Management test came up, I qualified because I had just so many LTs trying to get perm soup. So when that came up, I uh, took the exam and I interviewed for it and I got that before I could even finish my probation as a supervisor. <clears throat> I got my perm off the service management uh, position. And then I, you know, I kind of think about uh, uh, something Mario said in one of his speeches. It's the process and setting that goal and not giving up. It was a many times. I wanted to just give up because I kept trying to get perm soup, but I just seemed like I just couldn't get there. But I didn't give up. I went through the process <laughs> and stayed focused, and I'm here. So my next step, what brings me to Toastmasters, my next step, I want to be an administrator one, right? So I'm here to get myself ready for the next level. Thank you. <laughs>